For this first video of section 11.4, we're going to talk about spanning trees, exactly what is a spanning tree, and then talk about a depth first search algorithm. Of course, first it's important to understand what is a spanning tree. So a spanning tree is a tree created from a graph, so it's actually a subgraph of G that is a tree, which means we don't have any cycles, and it contains every vertex of G. So for instance, I could choose to connect A to E and connect A to D and connect A to B, and A doesn't connect directly to um, C, but I could connect B to C. So this would be an example of a spanning tree. Um, one method for creating a spanning tree is to simply identify anywhere that you have a circuit where there's more than one way to get to one vertex and simply remove those edges. And so essentially that's what I've done here. So I've created a spanning tree by getting rid of any circuits. So instead of simply identifying where the circuits are and removing any extra edges, we can actually do this by starting with a node and then creating edges from there um, that are obviously already in the original graph. And the important thing here is that we can do this in an algorithmic fashion, which means instead of having to do this by hand, we can let a computer do it for us. But let's look at how the algorithm would work. Essentially, we're going to start with a root vertex. So we're going to create a rooted graph, but really we're looking at this as to be undirected. So I'm just going to start with A. The next step says create an edge by connecting the current vertex to an incident vertex. So it really doesn't matter if you have edges that are labeled um, in an ordered fashion. So for instance, we have the alphabet. And so if we wanted to connect these in alphabetical order, obviously I would choose B over E. So I would examine from A that I could connect either E or D or B, because those are all the vertices that are connected to A. And I can choose any one that I want. So for instance, let's say I choose B. So I'm going to choose B and connect that edge. Now, the trick here for the depth, I'm sorry, the depth first search is that I don't go back to A, I start at B and say, where can I go from B? Well, B would take me to C. So then I look at C and say, well, C is not connected to anything else. So then the algorithm says, if you've gone as far as you can and you still haven't visited all the vertices, go back to the previous vertex. So I'm going to go back from C to B so that's why it's backtracking. So I'm back to B, and now I'm going to connect anything from B. So I'm going to connect B to D. And then D connects to A, but I've already visited A, so I can't connect anything to D. So I would go back to B again and say, well, that connects to E. So one example of a spanning tree is starting at A, going to B, and if you'll notice, B branches off into C and D and E. So this is one example of a spanning tree that was created using our depth first search algorithm. What you'll see quite often, um, and this is not the way that it's shown in your textbook, but quite often you'll see um, using a stack to keep yourself organized. And so here's how that would work. We would start with our root node. So we're going to start with A, um, and I'm gonna go ahead and put visited over here. So if I start with A, I have visited A, and in our stack, we're going to add any vertices that are next to or adjacent to A. So in this case, that would be B, and C. And we can choose either B or C. So let's say I choose B. So now B is going to leave the stack and I will say that I have visited B. Now C is still in the stack, meaning it's still something I can get to. But remember, our algorithm says now you're going to go from B. 
So instead of leaving C at the top of the stack, C is going to move down. Oops. And we're going to put any vertices adjacent to B, which would be D. And so then I'm going to visit D. And then I'm going to write anything adjacent to D. So I'm going to replace D with E. So now E is visited. And then from E, I can get to either F or G. Well, C is still in our stack, but it keeps getting moved to the bottom. Again, because, uh, because it is adjacent to A. So we're going to keep C in the stack, but again, we're going to keep going from E. We're going to go as far as we can with E. So I'm going to visit F. And then I'm going to write anything adjacent to F. So I'm going to have G or C. So now notice G and C were already in our stack. So now I'm going to visit G. Again, from F and then from G over to C. So now I have visited all of the vertices. What does my spanning tree look like? Well, it's just a path. A, B, D, E, F, G, C. So that is what my spanning tree would look like in this case, starting from A and making the decisions that I did. Here's a practice for you to try on your own. So go ahead and press pause, try this question, and then press play to see how you did. Again, it's important to remember that there's no right answer. Um, there's no one right answer. As long as you're able to visit each of the vertices, you have a spanning tree. So I'm going to start at A, and instead of creating a stack this time, I'm just going to circle um, potential vertices as we go. So from A, the only potential vertice is C, and so we're going to visit C. From there, I can visit either B or E, and just for fun this time, I'm going to visit E. So now E has been visited. B is still in the stack. From E, I can visit D or F. I'm going to choose D. And from D, I can only choose F. So F again leaves the stack and is now visited. From F, I can visit G or H. I'm going to choose G. Oops. And then from G, I can only choose H. So now I have visited H. And then from H, I can only visit, oops, I should have been creating the actual tree as I go. From H, I can only visit I. And now I have to backtrack all the way back to C to get this very last vertex of B. Oops, B. So this is one possible spanning tree that you could have come up with um, creating our depth first search. Up next, we're going to take a look at another method for creating a spanning tree using a breadth first search.